Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. This is our third tutorial where we're looking at Zim, at zimjs.com. It's a JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. We're seeing how we can use the features of Zim inside of Adobe Animate. Zim is built on CreateJS, and Adobe Animate exports to CreateJS, so that's how it all works. In our first tutorial, we saw how to go to the code section here and scroll on down to the Zim Shim. You should definitely see those tutorials if you haven't uh, seen the first and the second tutorial. Uh, once we get here, we would grab a zip file, and then uh, the zip file gives us the, all the Zim code to work right inside of Adobe Animate. So let's go into Animate now. We'll open up a preset that is uh, any of our web presets, but I use this one uh, for the canvas. And we've adjusted that slightly with a different framework, frame rate, sorry, and uh, stage color. We also need to bring in our profile, but unfortunately, Animate doesn't seem to save it, so we have to import it here. Import the profile and hit OK. That just centers our stuff for us, and more importantly, in the HTML side, imports the zim shim that comes from the zip file. All right, so now we're okay to go. And we'll bring up a code panel, F9, and this time we want to take a look at positioning. So let's make this a bit bigger here, and we will call it uh, zim. This is zim03 and positioning, positioning, and transformations, transformation. Sounds fun, huh? <laughs> so um, on the Zim site, we have a Zim Learn section. Let's just pop that up. So here's the Zim site. We have a Zim Learn section. And down below are the Zim Basics. So this is sort of the latest series that we've done on Zim Basics. And we'll be mirroring that here on the canvas. But we don't want to do everything that's there. We want to try and get as, as, as much as possible to the fun things that we can do in Zim. Many of those you can see in the code in five minutes, for instance. Uh, but anyway, just so you know, there is this as well. If you want more detail about what we're talking about here on the Zim side, then there's that one. Also, if you've never coded with JavaScript before, we have a very good series called Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding, which matches you up to the Zim School right here. Zim School's got lessons like textbook type lessons and practice places right online. So that all matches up. <laughs> if you're young, there's Zim Kids too. We've got Zim Kids. And even, even if you're older, sometimes that's a fun way to learn. Okay, as well as places on CodePen to practice things. Okay, so there's lots of lots of Zim Learn and, and tutorials there as well. But uh, so the, the gist of these tutorials here in Adobe Animate is just to give you a sense of what types of things Zim can help you with uh, inside of Animate. Uh, let's take a look at positioning and transformation. So most of the other ones will be fun in the future. We'll see some exciting stuff. This one's more like, uh, how do we position things? Or, <laughs> you know, it's not quite as fun, but still sort of important to know. Well, we could make it slightly fun by tempting you a little bit. And we'll start, instead of making a new rectangle or a new circle that we've already seen, why don't we make a new button? Like that. And we'll dot center that on the stage. And let's have a look. Oh, we'll save the file too. So we will call it zim underscore zero three underscore uh, position. Well, transformations is a is a position, so transformations would have been a better word for it, but whatever. Okay. So there it is centered, and we go control enter, and now we will see. A button, woohoo! Okay, so there's a button on the stage. Mind you, it's not doing anything, but that's the Zim default button. We would hook that up with an event listener. Oh, uh, we can maybe show you some of that later. I don't know if it'll be this one or some other one, but we're trying to do positioning here, aren't we? Well, aside from center, what else can we do with this? And let's drop that down like so. And we'll comment the center out. 
And how about we make it, we'll locate it. We'll locate it at 100 comma 100. So what locate does is it locates what's called the registration point. If we put a dot in there. <laughs> okay, so now the registration point, which is at the top left corner of a button, has been located 100 over in the left and 100 down. Uh, there's a grid, so new grid. And that will start in percentage, but we can start it with pixels if we want. Pick percent colon false, I think, or I can't remember if that's it or not. Yeah, it looks like it's it. So there's a grid. Uh, because we don't have an IDE like Flash, we implemented a grid, but also other features in Zim when we're not working in Animate so that you can find your way around. But there you can see that we're at 100, 100 and that's the registration point over. We, do, we don't need a grid though anymore. So I'll comment it over. <clears throat> what if we wanted to locate it 100, 100 from the bottom right-hand corner? Well, then we would use something else called pose. <clears throat> Excuse me, dot pose and 100, 100. That would pose it from the top left by default, but we can also pose it on the right hand side. And you want to see that? Can you imagine what this will look like? It'll be top right this time. Control enter. So there's top right. 100, 100. Note it's not the registration point over here that's 100, but the, the actual edge of the object is 100 and 100. So that's uh, a difference between pose and loc. And then here's what it would look like at the bottom. Bottom. Well, beep. oh no, the wrong one. Oh, my poor fingers. I've been typing all day. Okay, so control enter. You've probably been typing too all day, haven't you? Ah, oh, computers. So there's 100, 100 from the top, uh, from the bottom right, uh, right bottom. Great. Mm, you can also do center. So if we want center bottom, for instance, this becomes zero. So zero from the center and 100 from the bottom, and you get this. Okay, 100 from the bottom and zero from the center. And same with, you could center it from the, the uh, vertical as well, if you so desire. Great, that's pose. Another one is, and maybe it would be better if we actually did go to a rectangle, because we don't usually spin a button on oh my... I don't know, I guess I can show you it with a button, is center reg. So that looks like this, dot center reg. So that centers it and centers the registration point of the button, which you can't really see unless we dot outline this. And now let's have a look. So there we have it, although could have maybe scaled it a little bit bigger. That's a transformation. But what, what, what we have here is an outline of the button, this shows the zero, zero inside the button, but this shows the registration point, and there it is, center regged. And center regged is handy if we want to rotate something, for instance, or scale something, dot ska, uh, twice as big, because what's gonna happen is it will scale from the registration point, and that, um, like I said, we don't usually animate buttons. Well, we might animate buttons, Ooh, should we show you an animation button? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Uh, we will show you. So this look, looks like this, dot animate. And say we want to start at a scale of zero and animate to a scale of two, okay? Uh, well, probably one would be fine, but we'll, we'll double that and make it a, a scale of two. So here's what that looks like. We're centering it and animating it to a scale of two. Darn, I gotta get over here fast enough. Uh, ooh, it looks like I forgot something. <laughs> I forgot the bracket on the end of that. Okay, so there it goes. Did you see that? I'll refresh here. Whoosh. So it just animated to a scale of two, um, but if we didn't center reg it, can you imagine what this is going to look like? All we're doing is centering it, and then we're animating it to a scale of two. And we go control enter. That looks decidedly different. Refresh. Eh, not very nice, huh? Because now it's scaling up from the top left corner 
So that's um, not not quite as good. Same with when you rotate something. If we were to rotate ro rotation 360, well, let's go 720. We can put a loop on that quite easily. But there's the, the rotation of 720. And did we forget something? Rotation. Oh, we have the scale at zero still, so we don't want that. So we go there. And let me pull this over so we can see it. Okay, so that's going twice around, but that's not how we would usually animate a rectangle. So the center reg, putting the reg in the center, is handy there. And now it looks more like what we expect. Whoosh, whoosh, like so. So we're not really supposed to be doing animation. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Uh, but that just shows you a bit of the difference about the registration point is uh, if we want to scale rotation or or, um, or sorry, scale or rotate, it helps to go around the center most likely. There is another way that you can do that too. You could say dot reg, uh, like that. And then um, we could say center. So that, that would actually put a center on both sides. So let's comment out the center reg. And what should we do? We could, well, why don't we just center it? And uh, I will outline it as well, but we want to outline it after we center it. Like so. Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. And we control enter. Ah, gosh, I forgot I left the animation going. This outline is a snapshot in time, so that definitely shows that we've got a center reg. What if we wanted to, instead of cent uh, centering it, what if we wanted it to go to the bottom? I'm zeroing in on it. And uh, how about the right here? So this is kind of like it was with the pose where we can say, put the registration point at the right or the bottom. We can also use numbers there, but there it is. And so now we've got our animation about the bottom right hand corner. Whoosh, whoosh. Okay, um, so that's positioning. Let's pause the animation. And let's talk about, uh, did we talk about rotation? Dot rote. So we can rotate something with a dot rote. So 45. And what are we going to do? Why don't we outline, we'll center it, and then we'll rotate it. So there we are centering it. We don't want the reg of that. We will, okay, great. We can just keep, keep it centered. We'll rotate it and we'll outline it before we rotate it. And that way we get this. We can really see what that rotation is doing. So rote will rotate an object. And as you can see, it's rotating it from its registration point. A scale, dot ska, dot ska for scale, will scale it. So we can scale it twice as big. We won't bother rotating it. And uh, the same deal as before, where here's the, the original. And now we've scaled it twice as big, so it scales it from its registration point like that. You can also skew it, dot skew. I can't remember what skew does with the outline, um, say 10 in the X. And we try it now. So there's where it was originally, but now the button is skewed, 10 in the X, and it skews about its registration point. You can also skew in the Y by saying, uh, whatever that value is there. So we've seen scale, rotation, skew, registration point. Those are called transformations. Uh, sometimes we call the alpha one as well, dot alp for alpha. And we could set all of these with traditional properties that you are probably used to, like scale, x, scale, y, rotation, uh, alpha, etc. All those can be set as properties, but we have the short little chainable methods that allow us to do these things. So 0.5, and I won't bother skewing. And that gives us this. No, I don't need to outline anymore either. So there's a, a button that is alpha halfway down. And once again, if you see how that's centered at first and then we scaled from it, if you wanted to, you could just center it after all of this stuff. So if we cut these out and go to here, I won't bother with the outline. Outline needs to happen after it's been put on the stage. So anyway, there's 
a scaled centered button where the registration point is still at the left because we just centered it after we did the scaling. The alpha won't matter where it is. All right, so there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, registrations, alpha, scales, great. We even saw a little sneaky uh, animation there. Uh, we have the loc and the pose, center and center reg. There is also an add to, so I forgot to show you that, dot add to. And by the way, um, so if we just, let's end it there and comment out these guys. I didn't comment. Oh, right, this is, uh, to put them in manually. I'm used to working in Atom where I control slash comments. Okay, so this is an add to. It just takes takes our button, our object, and adds it at zero, zero. It happens, X, is, X and Y are zero, zero by default, and so it just puts it up at the top. I was gonna say though, the add to, the center, the center reg, the loc, and the pose, the parameters, the next parameter, for instance, of center, would be which container to add on. By default, it will add it to the stage, S or stage. So that's default. After, after the per, uh, first parameter is comes the second parameter. <laughs> what do you know? Second parameter is the depth, so zero or, or whatever. Okay, so that's the level or the layer that you're putting it at. Um, and obviously we can add things to containers as well. So if we added it to some container and that container had five things in it, we could say, hey, put it at level two inside of that some container. And same with after the position, after these four parameters comes what, what container, what level, the loc, what container, what level, add to, what container, what level, center reg, what container, what level. Okay. So I think that's good for this tutorial on positioning and transformations. When we come back, we'll see, I don't know, something, uh, something a little bit more exciting than just positioning. <laughs> sound good? Maybe we can talk more about animation. Does that sound like fun? Even though we're in Adobe Animate, Zim has a lot of things that we can do with animation that I think you'll really appreciate. All right, uh, until then, we'll see you later. I am Dr. Abstract, that guy there. It's been a pleasure to be with you, and we'll see you hopefully at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there. If you ask any questions, say hi, show some examples, etc. All right, ciao.